Hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for a slight uh, delay today. Welcome to today's talk. And today with us, <clears throat> we have Dr. Guru Raja Rao. Sometime back, it was, uh, we were all shocked in a few years back when the, uh, when the Lancet had run a series on oral health. And one of their findings was a very scatting remark on dentistry and how we as a profession have failed to handle the most common problems in dentistry, which namely is, of course, one of them is periodontitis. Now, I think that was actually written by other dentists and it was perhaps well deserved because uh, even two years later, the WHO still finds that the problem persists. And with that, uh, I think it's the best time that we go through periodontitis. After all, for anything to be treated first, the pathologists need to take care of it. So oral pathology has to first understand and probably go to a back to basics and check out what is happening with periodontitis before we can go ahead anymore. And it gives me great pleasure today to introduce and welcome uh, Dr. Tri R. Gururaja Rao. He is well known to all of us. He has the rare distinction of having actually two postgraduate degrees. He is both an oral pathologist and a periodontologist. To say thank you, sir, for being here. Welcome. Please join us. Hello, sir. Uh, good morning, all of you. It's my pleasure to participate in this uh, unique program. Today, I'm going to speak to you in an interesting topic called periodontitis. No, everyone knows what is periodontitis, but people still are not able to, able to solve the problem of periodontal diseases. To tell you the truth, there is no man who is free from periodontal diseases. No man is free from it. No race is free from it. It is something like a scourge upon mankind. You know, the day, the moment the, the child takes its birth, you know, from the womb to the tomb, the man has got periodontal problems. In fact, there are nearly 700 species of microorganisms that are dwelling in the oral cavity. You've got fungi, you've got the viruses, you've got the bacteria. All sorts of creatures are there. And unfortunately or fortunately, our oral cavity happens to be uh, a really uh, a museum where you will find these organisms dwelling and some of them cause a great damage to the oral health as well as in the periodontal tissues, as well as they cause damage to the system also to a larger extent. So today my talk is based upon these problems, how the challenge takes place in the body, and then how our body is trying to mitigate with these problems. As you know, we have just told you that periodontal diseases are among the uh, one of the biggest scourge upon mankind. No man is free from it. No race is free from it. And periodontal diseases are as a result of interplay between the microorganisms and the host. As, and I was telling you that nearly 700 species of bacteria, they dwell in the oral cavity. The periodontal diseases may also be influenced by alteration of the general health as well. In the presentation given in about a half an hour or 45 minutes, it will be my endeavor to brief, give you a brief outline of the in microbial influence and the host interaction to understand the periodontal pathology. Severe periodontitis in early life enhances the risk of several systemic diseases like coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, stroke, preterm low birth weight babies, as well as in the pregnant women. And you will find diabetes mellitus are also are closely linked to this periodontal problems. The recent investigation by Burge et al. in 19, uh, 2005 in the Journal of Clinical Microbiology has said that another element called chlamydia pneumonia, a respiratory pathogen, is also responsible for, periodont uh, for heart attacks. There's a close link between the chronic periodontitis and atherosclerosis as found in the PCR studies. Even the animal studies have shown that the inflammation of arteries are associated with chronic periodontitis. Of course, antibiotics do not have any effect upon the cardiovascular effects uh, who are at great risk. So my situation is I'm trying to tell you that not only the periodontal diseases are related or located only in the oral cavity, but it can also spread to different parts of the body, like heart or other places. 
Hersberg have reported the microorganisms like Streptococcus sanguis and Porphyrinologus gingivalis induce human platelets in the plasma, leading to thrombosis. And even this thromboembolism can bring about the problems. The viruses like cytomegaloviruses or herpes simplex virus can even induce thrombosis. Therefore, today there is an increased evidence of periodontal diseases and atherosclerosis, myocardial infarction, and coronary artery disease. This man is Van Dyke, who with whom I have been associated, and he has been a great person who was responsible for association of the various type of, you know, the 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 various uh, anti-inflammatory modulars uh, which are been associated with periodontal diseases. The same pathogenic micro, uh, mechanisms account for other uh, observed in the connective tissue and in bone destruction in all forms of periodontal diseases. The pro-inflammatory cytokines like uh, interleukin-1, interleukin-3, TNF-alpha, or uh, even, uh, they all induce and enhance the production of prostaglandins. And very well known that prostaglandins also are supposed to be a play a very important role in the mediation of inflammation and cause the, the molecular destruction of the extracellular matrix of gingiva and periodontal disease, uh, periodontal ligament, and lead to resorption of the alveolar bone. Now, here is a paradigm, literally, situation, which has, which has been mentioned in four different parts. The one which is on the left side is supposed to be the microbial challenge. Incidentally, this microbial challenge is supposed to be associated by various uh, such situations like the presence of antigens and the, uh, the presence of bacteria themselves or even the presence of the bacterial products like lipopolysaccharides or even their uh, enzymes and toxins and all those things. So on the contrary, you will find that there is also the host inflammatory, uh, immunoinflammatory modulants which are associated with the production of cytokines, prostaglandins or prostanoids or in matrix metalloproteinases like collagenases and all. And that have an effect upon the situation like connective tissue and bone. Now, what exactly happens is there's a breakdown of the epithelial uh, barrier. There's also the breakdown of the connective tissue like collagen and all those things and also be associated with the bone destruction. And that all situations, all the cocktail will lead to the various changes in the clinical symptoms like, you know, the presence of inflammation, which are evidenced clinically. Uh, say, for example, a patient takes an apple, you'll find there's bleeding of gums. So naturally, the bleeding is the first sign of inflammation. Normally, in health, you'll find that the gingiva is pink in color. It is having stippling, the presence of you know, uh, knife edge contour, and you will find that the location of the uh, margin of gingiva is at the cement junction. But when the inflammation takes place, you will find the tissues become soft, enlarged, and you will find there is presence of, you know, uh, edema, and you will find that there is also associated breakdown of the bone, which can take place in the course of time when the gingivitis turns into periodontitis. Apart from that, you will find there are two other factors which play a very important role. The environmental factors and the risk acquired risk factors, as well as the genetic factors, they also play a very important role as well. So I'm going to give you a brief resume of all these things, which I'm going to go talk to you in the course of time. The clinical picture, as I was telling you, is as a result of complex interplay between the microbial challenge, the shared events, and the disease modifiers. The modifying factors are major determinants of the differences observed in the different periodontal conditions. They may affect the age of the disease, the onset, the pattern of the observed bone, and the tissue destruction, the rate of disease progression, and also the response to various kinds of therapy and the severity and frequency of disease recurrence. Incidentally, all these are contributing to a variety of changes in the clinical picture, which I just now told you some time back. Now, here is the situation. How nasty is the environment? You can see there is a pendulous or you know enlarged interdental papilla. You will see there is a, a, 
uh, both you know marginal as well as papillary enlargement you will also see this pus discharge you will also see this presence of fistulas and also meckel's fistulas and you will also find there's a life saver like bulge which we call it as stillman's cleft and all those things could be evidence in periodontal diseases and associated with that there will be deep periodontal breakdown uh, due to the loss of alveolar bone now all this story starts with a uh, presence of a thin layer on the surface of tooth which we call it as biofilm no matter how well we brush our teeth no matter how we well rinse our mouth this biofilm starts forming within uh, an hour after the for brushing or within after the use of your mouth rinses and all this biofilm refers to a development of microbial communities on the submerged surfaces in an aqueous environment this consists of primarily a complex symbiotic uh, microbial communities and human beings are themselves just not are associated with this situations with biofilms this biofilm can occur in different places including cooling towers in food processing plants even in the ship hulls even in medical implants like you are you know processes and all those things can be associated with biofilms and at the same time you will also notice that even in paper manufacturing this presence of the biofilms and even in the tap water you will find the presence of biofilms will be there apart from being in the teeth surface now whole all this microbial derived sessile community uh, characterized by cells that are irreversibly attached to each other and are embedded in a matrix of extracellular polymeric substance that are produced by themselves and they exhibit an altered phenotype with respect to growth rate and the gene transcription and that forms what is known as the biofilm now this was described by kogham way as way as back in 1996 as a slime city you know like you have got a city which has got concrete jungles you have got the the roads you have got the various uh, telephone connections in the same way you will find these uh, bugs that are present on the surface of the biofilm they try to interact with each other you know they are presence of uh, in the form of a bed of a dense what you call as uh, opaque fair slime which are about 5 to 10 microns thickness it is a sticky mix of polysaccharides and other polymeric substances also with water and all these are produced by the bacteria and you will find that they have a mushroom type colonies and they are interconnected by network of channels which we which we are associated as i was telling you uh, for communication purposes and they are also associated with each other by communicating with pheromones as well and this is around 5 to 10 microns in thickness and you will find you will find a wide amount of 100 to 200 microns height of these uh, structures the formation of biofilm as a matter of fact is supposed to be a bacteria appear to favor the hydrophobic uh, non polar surfaces and they are associated with the planktonic organisms as well as the motile bacteria which are of lower molecular weight uh, organic matter and they are associated with the contact on the surface of tell by surface by the addition and that's associated with the expressing genes uh, with the phenotypic shift change in the surface now these sessile the organisms uh, cells they try to divide and cause micro colonies they communicate with each other as i was telling you by signaling compounds and pheromones and there is a quorum sensing also which is associated with a structural and physiologic sophistication and you will find that the environment is conducive to the proliferation to the organisms including fungi protozoa and nematodes and all those things now with all this formation you will find that this bio biofilm is a structured community of bacterial cells now it is enclosed in a self produced polymeric matrix and adherent to an inert or an living surface and this biofilm which is formed is supposed to be of a pathogenic trait you will find all these sequencing taking place the planktonic cells which are sessile they adhere to the surface of the teeth they will form proliferation and you will find they will form a 
a sort of development maturation takes place and this is how the mature biofilm which can be present these microorganisms they just don't remain there on the surface of the teeth but they can also penetrate into the blood vessels and cause all sorts of problems so as i was telling you the characteristics biofilms ecological communities in evolved uh, to permit survival of the community as a whole they also have an exhibit to um, metabolic cooperatively and have a primitive circulatory system by its own and you will find that these numerous microenvironments and radically different ph oxygen concentration and electric potential all this helps to uh, to improve the colonization and there is a reduction or resistant to the uh, usual host defenses and you will find this resistant to the systemic or locally derived antibiotics can also can take place as a result of these uh, uh, microorganisms which are present in the biofilms so how this uh, microorganism colonization takes place is at the first by the presence of the gram positive cocci they form on the surface of the teeth and eventually especially the streptococcus sanguis is the one which is the prominent one and then later on there is followed by the presence of uh, gram positive filamentous organisms which are called as actinomyces lepto uh, lepto uh, actinomyces org species which are supposed to be playing a very important role in uh, forming a sort of a corn cob hazare sir can you hear me yes mandana yes, yes. tell me yeah, yeah what do you want to share with us on yeah please it's, you know like uh, uh, professor samar naike as uh, saman lakshman samar naike beautifully yes. described you know the cross talks of microbes so beautifully cross talk yes and sir and these microbes of different groups uh, different uh, uh, you know ecologies they cross talk to their uh, uh, factors you know like uh, virulence factors and then depending upon the host immunity the disease manifest that's yes. wonderful explanation uh, i gathered after listening to professor samar naike who has been uh, distinguished uh, one of the personalities between uh, that stanford study of 2% of top most uh, scientists so interacting with uh, samar naike we have done lot of work at nagpur on aggressive periodontitis and uh, my study is uh, went on uh, we started with actinomyces uh, actinomycosis a we started but completed the entire oh. spectrum of uh, red orange and green zones and ultimately we have uh, um, come to the conclusion yes that sir that allergy uh, and periodontitis and uh, yes i was Uh, telling back to aggressive periodontitis it's a one of the very severe disease you know uh, persons loses their uh, molars anteriors uh, uh, at the age of uh, very young age of 16 to 20 and miserably you know it can't be the aesthetics can't be restored uh, teeth can't be saved yes so this was uh, i think but uh, i have been talking cross talking to my I colleague throughout the because we uh, need to understand the indian ethnic uh, ethnicity in this uh, and the indian immunity okay vandana i yes, think uh, we can listen to dr bhuvan yes sir thank you so much thank you thank you so much for that sir yes <laughs> uh gururaj sir will you please start your share again to you tell how the formation of plaque takes place incidentally there are different uh, ways in which the corn cob appearance takes place as i was telling you these are some of the organisms which are associated with periodontal diseases basically the porphyromonas intermedias then uh, actinobacillus actinomastum comitans and as i was telling you as uh, hazare was telling you aggressive periodontitis is supposed to be associated with these uh, organisms especially the actinobacillus actinomastum comitans and you will also find porphyromonas gingivalis which are also associated with this periodontal diseases and this is chlamydia pneumonia which is again supposed to be a respiratory pathogen which is closely associated when people walk in the forest for walking and all those things they are affected with periodontal and respiratory uh, diseases which is associated with chlamydia 
here is the situation where i was trying to tell you is about the various microbial complexes which are associated which are known as the red complex the orange complex and you got the green complex and all the organisms which are here in this group are supposed to be very dangerous which are associated with the periodontal breakdown especially the porphyromonas gingivalis the bacteroides porcitis and then tanarilla denticola which are supposed to be a great uh, infectious organisms now you will find that uh, it is clear that there are nearly about 700 species uh, serotypes and biotypes of bacteria which are found in the oral cavity and dozen or more species have been implicated to one uh, extent or another in the causation of periodontitis nevertheless experts have recently concluded three species as i was telling you the gram negative organisms and especially the porphyromonas gingivalis tanarilla porcitis and the actinobacillus actomastum comitans which are supposed to be playing a very important role in the juvenile periodontitis and similarly the spirochetes also play a dominant role the growth of this sub supra gingival plaque is followed in a matter of days and you will find the gram negative species they colonize uh, through the specific receptor binding to the gram positive bacteria if left unhindered a few days later tightly adherent microbial plaque becomes visible on the surface of tooth at the gingival margin and an acute inflammatory response uh, manifested as gingivitis develops here is a situation where the microorganisms they are trying to invade the tissues you will find varieties of organisms you will find the spirochetes you will also got the rod shaped organisms you will also find the the um, the uh, the the uh, bacilli which are entering the the uh, cells and, and they try to play a dominant role in the damage to tissues the biofilms contain numerous micro environments that greatly vary in Uh, ph the oxygen tension and availability of specific nutrients the subgingival plaque differs from the classic definition of biofilms in that more loosely attached and some unattached bacteria are found at the surface of the biofilm in contact with the epithelium of the gingival tissue and the mode of bone destruction takes takes place is associated with the presence of these organisms uh, uh, structures also like lipopolysaccharides which can be of great uh, immense responsibility for damaging the bone and they initiate the prostaglandin uh, synthesis and these prostaglandin can also be associated with alveolar bone destruction the presence of macrophages of course when the presence of these uh, microbial products are there like lipopolysaccharides or the uh, gram negative organisms they can induce the macrophage uh, production and that would lead to production of matrix melanoproteinases and that causes the damage to the uh, collagen which leads to the uh, destruction of the bone and that is how it is formed the bacteria survive and flourish and you will find similarly the bacteria are in the part of protected by from systemically or locally environment Uh, of the antibiotics and other antibac antibacterial drugs the gram negative bacteria in the biofilms shed vesicles that are rich in lipopolysaccharides and these lipopolysaccharides as i was telling you when they enter the pocket epithelium are ready to uh, have a challenge to the back, uh, connective tissue and you will find that it will lead to uh, damage substances released from the surface of the biofilm like lipopolysaccharides activate the cells of junctional and pocket epithelium to replicate and secrete inflammatory mediators which include the interleukin 8 and interleukin 1 alpha which attract and activate more neutrophils the activated cells also uh, secrete the matrix metalloproteinases and a large uh, family of enzymes which are collectively associated can degrade the collagen and that leads to loss of the collagen breakdown these enzymes degrade collagen fibers attached to the root surface allowing the epithelium to extend laterally and apically resulting in deepening of the gingival pocket and the clinical attachment loss and the formation of periodontal pockets now you can find clinically how the variation takes place the loss of 
teeth, there's also mobility of the teeth, there's migration of the teeth, you'll find there's deep periodontal brockets, and when you see the radiographs, you'll find there's a greater damage to the alveolar bone uh, in, all the, in all the teeth, in all the segments, and that's the classic situation where periodontitis has set in in a larger way. And of course, all this associated with the, uh, with the various changes that take place in the inflammation, where you will find there is a host response associated with the cellular uh, changes, as well as in the, uh, the humoral changes as well. And you will find there is margination, as well as the diabetes, and there's also extravasation of these cells, which can bring about variety of changes. And you will find the uh, inflammatory cell inflammatory, uh, infiltrate uh, consisting of lympho, uh, neutrophils, B and T lymphocytes, and monocytes and macrophages accompanies the periodontal pocket formation. The inflammate, inter, infiltrating T and B lymphocytes will become activated uh, through their encounter uh, with the various bacterial antigens and cytokines, and they secrete a variety of cytokines which include the interleukin-2, interleukin-3, interleukin-4, 5, 6, 10, and also INF y, uh, gamma. And that will also expand the responding T cell clones and drive the B cells uh, to differentiate into antibody producing plasma cells. Now, here is a situation where you will find that the beginning when there is gingivitis, you will find there is presence of the B cell lesion. And as the progression of the uh, uh, inflammation takes place in the course of time, you'll find this B cells will be uh, various, varied into uh, T lymphocytes. And you will find these T lymphocytes, when they multiply, they produce these cytokines and bring about a variety of changes. Now, the various anti, uh, antibodies that are formed like IgG, IgM, IgA myoglobulins are formed and the predominant antibodies induced by periodontal pathogens are of IgG2 subclass. Infiltrating monocytes are activated by LPS and of course the IFN in uh, gamma to secrete large quantities of interleukin-1, TNF-alpha and prostaglandins and matrix metalloproteinases. Some of these include like interleukin-1 beta, which are self-stimulatory and they can uh, maintain macrophage activation and perpetuate the immunoinflammatory response. Now, as a consequence, the collagen and other uh, components of the cellular, extracellular matrix are destroyed. The epithelium and the endothelial cells, they similarly participate. And in, in the normal non-inflamed periodontal tissues, the bone formation and resorption are tightly coupled and exquisitely regulated. In destructive periodontitis, on the contrary, the activated macrophages and fibroblasts secrete prostaglandins, which induces formation of large number of osteoclasts and alveolar bone resorption. The interleukin-6, interleukin-1 beta, and TNF-alpha also participate, but to a larger extent than prostaglandins. Of course, here is another person who, with whom we have been associated is from Australia, Professor Conard who is supposed to be a very important person in the uh, metal, matrix metalloproteinases associated with bone destruction. In fact, he has written also a beautiful book on the uh, connective tissue of bone. Uh, periodontal diseases are unidirectional process. The same T cells that are produced, uh, they cause the destructive pro-inflammatory cytokines and MMPs that can be a mediator and that suppress the immunoinflammatory response. And of course, I will skip some of these things as I was telling you. Uh, these are the risk factors that are indicators for periodontitis, like tobacco smoking. I think Dr. Hazare will be very much interested. Systemic diseases, stress, advancing age, race, ethnicity, male gender, uh, past history of periodontitis, compromised host uh, response, and then oh, poor oral hygiene, dental care and even heredity, they are supposed to be play a very important role. In fact, they have shown that people who smoke, they have got a poor leukocyte uh, activity. They will find that there is sluggish activity of the diabetes, uh, diabetes as well as there is also lack of you know, uh, phagocytosis in many people 
apart from that people who smoke tobacco and all those things will find this presence of larger number of uh, gram negative microorganisms as well i know stress of course stress has been associated with periodontal breakdown it was a known fact and we have seen in many studies like uh, using you know catecholamines as well as you know uh, uh, the way the stress factor like uh, adrenaline and all those things which are associated with the breakdown of alveolar bone and uh, there was a study called as periodontal emotional stress syndrome where you will find that the study was conducted in vietnam war veterans and they found that people who are in stress uh, during the war they, sub they were subjected for greater amount of uh, production of these 17 hydroxy ketosteroids which are associated with the breakdown of the alveolar bone as well as the uh, ulcerative colitis which was found in them to a larger extent of course as the age advances there is also a reciprocal increase in the breakdown and of course the race they say that the caucasians as well as the uh, at indian ethnic group we are supposed to be having having more chances for periodontal breakdown you will also find that the male are more suffering than compared to the females and you will find that if the poor oral hygiene definitely contributes for the greater amount of breakdown and uh, yeah, as far as when the host defense mechanism decreases as in diabetes you know there's a very close link between diabetes and periodontal diseases as you find that the um, uh, the blood sugar level increases you will also find that there is a greater tendency for alveolar bone damage but when you improve the uh, oral health you will find there is a decrease in the uh, blood sugar levels that shows that there is a definite relationship between the um, uh, with, between the blood sugar as well as in the periodontal disease status as well among the environmental and the acquired factors tobacco smoking systemic diseases such as diabetes drugs and diseases that compromise host defense uh, male gender as well as uh, microbial deposits on the surface of teeth as i was telling you are all related stress has been implicated and recently documented recent studies subjected to multivariate data analysis have demonstrated the bacteria alone account for 20% of the risk of developing severe periodontitis and tobacco smoking is equally or more important as a disease determinant subgingival organisms as i was telling you constitute a enormous continuing bacterial load they are continually renewing the reservoir of lps and other gram negative uh, substances which are living are associated with this sort of damage that takes place incidentally how the breakdown takes place is also associated with the fibroblast gene activation it can occur both in situations like health as well as in disease you will find in the health there is a uh, improvement in production of collagen and and other extra mat cellular matrix inhibitors of the metalloproteinases matrix metalloproteins takes place and you will find there is a good tissue remodeling takes place and this is how there is a turnover of the collagen taking place due to fibroblast gene activation on the contrary you will find that the production of the presence of these metallo metal proteinases like collagenases can bring about a tissue destruction and that's how you will find there is a breakdown which can occur now here is again situation like van dyck has told there are pro inflammatory cytokines which are associated with the breakdown and that could bring about these damage the pathogenesis of periodontitis and systemic diseases such as atherosclerosis coronary artery disease and stroke appears to be uh, more associated which in many cases uh, is very common recent findings as i was telling you is in heart failures is attributed to a hormone called as cardiac hormone beta natriuretic peptide peptide uh, which increases in serum and could be measured as a single marker in myocardial infarction and incidentally this presence of this particular hormone natriuretic peptide in the saliva is also a great uh, source of information to myocardial infarction here is professor as often baker who was supposed to be the father of periodontal medicine 
and myself, we were together at the Academy of Periodontology way back in 2008. And you will find that a good treatment just by scaling and polishing, you can find so much change can be brought about in the tissue environment and tissue architecture. Then that's how it made very clear that the local factors play a very dominant role in the production of periodontal diseases. And if you eradicate or remove them to a larger extent, the tissue can be brought to a good harmony. And that is how we would like to inform. And we can make the life more secure and less discomfort. The longevity also depends upon uh, our surroundings and also on all our mouth. Potential microbes that could be dangerous, hence uh, must be attended uh, so that the mouth uh, can be clean and can uh, every time, at least at six months, once we should go ahead to do this aspect. Now you will find the presence of these uh, viruses which have come in the picture is also as COVID-19 in the saliva. They are also supposed to be playing a very important role today in the uh, respiratory damage as well as in the lung pathology and all. So even the presence of COVID-19 in the saliva play a very important role. And you will find there is presence of you know, ulcerations in the mouth as well as you know, uh, presence of uh, rashes which are characterized in the uh, COVID-19. And all these are manifestations which can be studied uh, in situations in the uh, presence of various changes that take place in the oral environment. So this is my book, recent book, which has been coming uh, and it has got a lot of information and there are nearly 32 contributors in this book. And I hope people will be able to enjoy reading this book in both undergraduate as well as postgraduate levels. So thank you very much for the patient listening. Thank you, sir. That was a lovely presentation. I have a question. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, one of the things is uh, as a combination of a, uh, pathologist and uh, periodontologist. Mm -hmm. So at what level of uh, involvement, of periodontal involvement, do you feel that we can still save the tooth? See, it is uh, a very great effort that we have to put, especially if there's 50% of remaining bone that is present in the oral cavity in the particular tooth, we shall be able to give a lot of uh, importance in preserving the tooth to a larger extent. Now, ultimately, the damage is uh, uh, getting more and more uh, accentuated because of the presence of local factors or because of trauma from occlusion or because of systemic conditions like diabetes and all. It becomes a very, very big situation where we will be able to uh, do less for that situation in the paper. Now, what I wanted to tell you is, uh, it is not just doing the scaling or root filling, but at the same time, we have to do some other uh, non-surgical approaches also uh, by use of you know, uh, uh, modulators like pro-inflammatory modulators or drugs, or maybe in the form of antibiotics, low uh, chemo, what's called as the uh, antibiotics like tetracyclines and all, which can be of greater use in the uh, improving the oral environment and reducing the bacterial flora in the mouth. Uh, many people have tried the use of newer drugs like pro periostat. Now, periostat is supposed to be a drug which is uh, playing a very important role in reducing the microorganisms at the same time, re reducing the, back, the, the collagen damage. Now they say that tetracyclines, uh, they are chemically modulated supposed to be playing a very important role in inhibiting the collagenase activity. Now, when collagenase activity is reduced, as I was telling you, all this story is because of matrix metalloproteinases. So if you try to reduce the activity of MMPs, you'll be able to improve the breakdown to a larger extent. At the same time, the longevity of tooth can be also improved. Apart from that, we have to remove the redundant organisms that are present in the oral cavity in the pocket environment. At the same time, create a healthy environment also. It is not an easy job to remove the microorganisms from the connective tissue environment. They are deep-seated also, you know, by doing root planing or by doing uh, scaling or by even doing periodontal surgeries like flap or anything like that. We are trying to remove the pocket wall lining also. 
at the same time we are trying to create an environment which is more healthier so we adapt the flap back we restore the we give switches and all so all this uh, a tedious job helps to improve the tissue conditions yeah but at the end of the day i guess all that tedious job if it can save a tooth it's like well well worth it definitely <laughs> the, the the slogan of the american <laughs> academy of periodontology is teeth for life incidentally it doesn't mention teeth whether natural or artificial so my <laughs> my my slogan adds a prefix for that natural teeth for life so yes i think so. yes we are struggling all these years we are struggling to see that the natural teeth stands in the mouth and of course it is very important that the patient education as well as the recall importance yes. has to be done and many occasions like in india we are unable to follow the patients whom we have treated even though we might have done good amount of surgery we have spent a lot of time the patient has given a lot of money to us but then the patient fails to respond to our uh, recalls and that becomes a big and a enigma for us there is a question uh, from dr priya uh, can you please elaborate on influence of periodontal inflammation on oral cancer well periodontal inflammation and oral cancer have been uh, still an enigma we are still unable to get the link between the two incidentally the oral cancer is associated with uh, different situations like viruses as well as in uh, situations like you know bacteria and all those things but unfortunately there is a link between the viruses and periodontal diseases and of course viruses and uh, cancer so we could relate uh, this virus is as a factor to be associated with you know oral influence as well as in oral cancer of course we have found out in situations like that sir thank you so much you. it was thank wonderful you having you here thank you god bless you all. thank you god bless sir and i look forward to having all of you here again thank you so much have a wonderful week and see you next tuesday bye 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 sir thank bye. you